I mean, and there are women sleep living in cars with their kids and getting raped. I mean, yeah. these are these are just. Yeah. But we're not talking about that. You know, we just never talk about that. Yeah. But I do now because I include it in part of my listing of sex discrimination when I talk to legislators. It's the first thing on the topic now. Mm. I said that there is an epidemic of stalking, groping, trafficking, and rapes mm -hmm. in all spheres. Mm -hmm. The military, on college campuses, on the street, in the home. Yeah. You can fix this. That's yeah. what I keep saying. You can fix this. Vote for the Equal Rights Amendment Bill, blah, 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 whatever mm -hmm. We've got to make them feel the pain. We've got to make them face reality. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I think... I think it's easy. It's easy for lots of men to be isolated from those experiences. It, but it's really easy for someone like a legislator, the head of a company, even a small company, mm -hmm. to be isolated from the experiences of the women mm -hmm. who work for them. And they're um, so powerful, their wife isn't telling them, you know, I need more of you. Um, doctors' wives go through that. And, yeah. You know, and they yeah. have to speak up. All kinds of people, you know, all yeah. kinds of women end up with, with that kind of situation. But the men don't, men in those they positions, well, I mean, they're, <laughs> you know, there, there's a point in the power structure in any organization where you don't even drive your own car very often anymore, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they're, well, they're, didn't George Bush, uh, the, uh, George, <laughs> George, George, the other, the first George, didn't he go shopping one day and didn't know how to deal with a cash register yeah. and a credit card? And yes. He never had yes. to do with that. There were people who took care of that mm -hmm. for him, right? Sure, sure. So imagine I feel so if you don't know how to buy your own groceries <laughs> in the 1980s. Yeah. <laughs> At, I mean, it was the 1980s, you know. Mm. Um, those little scanner things were new, right? Mm. Um, but... Now they're normal. But imagine you don't know how to buy your own groceries and pay for them. What else do you not know about how people are experiencing life? I got life? married like especially, that. Especially, yeah, especially I mean, people no. who aren't your race, aren't your gender, aren't your social class. If you don't try to have contact with those experiences, you know, you're not going to. Mm. The only so. uh, senator in Florida, I forgot, uh, Vallejos or something like that, mm. his name was... Uh, he, he brought up twice, passed it twice mm. in his committee. Mm. The reason he was keen on it was because, one, his legislative aide had asked him, please, please, just for me, do this. <laughs> and the other thing is he had a, a, a young adult daughter yeah. who was urging him. Yeah. So it's a personal thing. We've got to make it personal, and you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you're right about that. And I think... Making it, we do, making more contact with them, you know, yeah. with our legislators. Just see, we don't leave them alone, right? I mean, I have a calendar of, uh, you know, every every week there's something where they see ERA in front of their faces. Yeah, something happens. Yeah, we have a letter to the editor in their town, or um, I get uh, cities in Florida to mm -hmm. endorse it. I get county commissions to endorse it. These are the grassroots people that support the state legislature. Right. Yeah. yeah, they're their buddies, so that's a start. But you have a lot of the of the strategy worked out, you know. Yeah, well, it's sort of been intuitive. Nobody ever taught me how to be. You know, that's one. Of, that's one of the key we, things I wanted to ask managers. you. <laughs> we women are managers. Sure. We learn how to strategize, how to fit uh, full time work in with your daughter's. Uh, uh, reception or mm -hmm. her sports team or something. Mm -hmm. We learn how to do that. Right. We have to be uh, quick on our feet. Yeah. You know? We are perfect to be legislators, actually. We, we are. No, we're good at keeping track of lots of things. and You know, we are now 20% in Congress, mm -hmm. we women. 20%? Yeah. And, and Pat Schroeder, no. who's chair. You know, we should she, be a lot more You remember Pat Schroeder? Yes, she's, I do. She's chair of my board. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, she says it'll take, we, we get 30% feminist women, not just women, feminist women mm -hmm. in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, we can begin edging it over yeah. to more humane treatment of everybody. Yeah. I think she's right. Because I saw it on my own board here. They were all men but me. Um, you mean the city board? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the city commission I was on. Um, and when I came on, I wasn't listened to. I mean, I could tell you, you know, I wasn't listened to. If I made a suggestion, uh, it was like I hadn't spoken. Uh, I made a motion, and it was like, 
you know. But then later on, they pick it up as their motion. Yeah. You know, and I'd applaud it. Yeah, go for that. Yes. Like, give them credit. Give, if, mm-hmm. if their ego's so small, they need that. Give it to them. Mm-hmm. Give it to them. Let them have it. Mm-hmm. And uh, gradually, I became more and more respected because I had some great ideas. I mean, like, no um, sex discrimination. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, por- I blocked the porn palace they were going to have here in town. Um, you know, little things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you just have to keep at legislators. And so they're well versed in the ERA mm-hmm. in Florida, those legislators. Yeah. They just. Well, don't but care. they're well versed, and it's, you know, it's a woman, and the women who are willing to amplify her voice working 18 hours a day most days, um, which is kind of unimaginable. Really, I don't know how you've done it. I I don't either, and uh, it really was an obsession, mm-hmm. and it had to be if I was going to get where I was going. Mm-hmm. I thought, um, I just had this drive to make yeah. things right, and that's what comes from being an only child and the firstborn. And oh the, sure, probably, right? No yeah. allies. <laughs> My mom was an only child. Oh bless her. And she, yeah, she described it that way to me one day. She's mm-hmm. like, look, you had your brother. I had nobody to be on my team, you know? That's true. If the parents were, you know, being irrational or not, you know, I had no backup. I, had mm-hmm. no, I was like, oh yeah, that would... You do learn terrible. to stand your own two feet. Yeah. And that, you know, because a spoiled child always has this image of getting everything ever wanted. Well, we were so poor, nobody got what they wanted, you know? I mean, we had outhouses. We lived in a, a, a you know, with an outhouse in yeah, New really. Mexico. My dad was in, we got water out of the pump in the, mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. there, you know. Then maybe that's where I learned to tilt at windmills. Could be. Maybe I'm a, a female you know what Don Quixote. Like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this is true of activists. You know, I think that's our, our like, archetype is Don yeah. Quixote, you know. And, and I've gotten yeah. strong so that, uh, number one, um, I've grown a skin three inches that you cannot insult me. Yeah. I mean, I just don't take things personally anymore. Yeah. And a lot of us women do, and I always did. Right. But I realized that's their problem. I'm me, and I'm okay with me. If you're not okay with well, okay. Well, we're still taught to be. We're still taught that our first job is to be liked. You know. I There's a couple of new articles. I never learned it. That's well. But if it if if it hurt your feelings at first. Oh yeah. For it many did. You did learn it. Oh, I but very you unlearned it. it. You know, and we, there's a couple I of saw articles it circulating. Work. It just doesn't. Well, it's, it's a, you feel eventually you get to be a grown-up person yeah, in yourself, and it's harder right, yeah. to, you know, harder to unseat you, you know, mm-hmm. um, to stick with tilting metaphors. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's just an article circulating um, right now on Facebook in feminist circles about, you know, how young women are still taught that it's it's important to be liked above all things. Mm. And Boy, that's being a liked driver. can be a very small box. Oh, you know? yeah. Um, and that sure discourages curiosity and, and outreach. Assertiveness and, and, and community. Learning and who you are. Yeah. All kinds of things. Yeah, it's a very, very tricky place mm. being liked. Um, if you don't like me, you don't like me. That's your choice. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's a big world. Lots of people do. You'll so. like someone else. It's yeah. fine. Um, but I wanted to I wanted to ask you also, I'm gonna have to formulate this question in my head. Um, around see the ERA is a hard story to talk about because there's this whopping failure in the middle of it where it doesn't happen. And, and it's we not can, because you have to erase the word failure. Well, it of, fell out of that way. way. <laughs> it was it was uh, we barely missed passing. That's yes. it well it's like it it, it it I had the a, effect. I have here's, a linguist in California who does my speech. Here's why I use that word. Here's why I use that word. It had the effect of a failure. Of course. It drove it drove people's energy underground. It drove people away. Oh. They started to work on other stuff that needed attention. Like you know, see stuff. more and more women and shelters got started. Now they're wedded to these these fragmented pieces. Where well, somebody, at least right, you could win something, right? At least you could win something. But they you could don't. build a women's shelter. You could open a clinic. You could. Work on education. You could do some. But how thing. much easier when we have an equal rights amendment that says if women are treated equally, they need a shelter, sure, and men do too. I mean, of course, we fight for men as well. Well, you still would have to convince people that abuse in the private sphere is a public issue. 
right, Good. has public effects that radiate for and decades it is your business. in the public. Yeah. Um, and so those people, people who are suffering violence, need support. You know, um, but that's that's a that's a that's a more cultural thing because mm. we're Americans and we're pioneers and we just hunker in and take care of stuff and deal with it. And I think that's and, in me. <laughs> yeah, but but to but there's there's a lot of reasons that we don't want to deal with it. But um, the ERA would help with that. It would not magically make a whole bunch of domestic violence shelters oh, sprout. No. Um, but that, and that is a where, thing. Yeah. The, the thing I wanted to ask you was. You know, I've talked to a number of, of women who were in the movement um, before I was able to get a hold of you, and um, we've paused over 1981, 82, 83 for a second, um, because what happened was really a betrayal. It's not that the activists didn't do the work. It's not that the congressional bill failed to pass or that the ratification in the states wasn't going well. It was going along pretty quickly, actually, for ratification. Hawaii did it in 20 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, right? Good. You know, I mean, out of Congress on Hawaii. it's a very long process to get, you know, 35 yeah. states to do yeah, anything. Yeah, but it sort of stalled. You know? Right. And, there, you know, so the push had to, people had to get very stubborn and stick with it. And that there was this core group of activists who were just still seriously in there. Mm. Um, later in the ratification process, when 1979, 80, 81, 82 come along, mm. Reagan's elected. Mm. Um, a he took lot it, of the he took it off the uh, platform. the Republican, you know, the party platform. Mm. Um, and that's when I think that's when a lot of women in the country went, "Wait, something is changing." That's yeah. very large. Well, that here. was very. Um, did you know that Kerry took it off the Democratic platform in 2004? Yes, mm. I did. No. I got it back on. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Yeah, no, that was annoying. I, I had to call, you know, and get the right computer. I was amazed to find out <laughs> that Florida didn't have a platform. Oh, they they, they were too afraid. Thing. Too afraid to offend somebody or make uh, you know, make it hard for the candidates who were running with Democrats. They didn't have a platform. So I got involved with the platform builders. Mm -hmm and uh, wrote it up for them. That's mm -hmm. the thing. If you can write, or find somebody who can write well, mm -hmm. you can get a lot done. Yeah. You know, if you're fairly literate, you know, you can get a lot done. It's still an essential skill. Um, but what happened with you around in the that 80s. time? In yeah, the 80s. Yeah, in the early 80s, the late 70s, when there's a little stall in the ratification process. We're getting down to okay, the when it when it stalled, Yeah. that would have been 1982. Yeah, and well, that's when it stopped, right? Because that's when the deadline took effect. Oh, it, time limit. Right, the time limit took effect. <laughs> it's so, not so deadly. It's not so, it's not so deadly. That's you true. You gotta watch your that's language. That's true. Um, uh, well, I have. I'm. I. I have a. But uh, it's okay. I, I don't mind hard understand. words. That's one of my no, problems. Your audience, um, uh, you know, picks yeah, it up differently. I know. I know. Um, but um, what was I doing in the eighties? Let's see. Well, um, yeah, I was teaching. teaching. I was I was a, a, a professor then at the time, mm -hmm. running all these things and, and uh, organizing and writing, creating tool evaluation tools for the students to self evaluate. All that so stuff. you weren't. I mean, you were still involved, but you weren't. You know, sort of right there in the thick of the fight. No, I kept time. I kept putting you know assertiveness up on the doors on my office door and mm -hmm. teaching assertiveness. So you were working class. locally in your in your in, space a little more. Yeah, in New York, mm -hmm. in New York. But you're right. I was kind of laying back till it raised its head again, and um, then suddenly I came to the point and I said. Oh, I know what happened that got me reignited mm -hmm. was there was something called, uh, a group called the ERA Campaign Network, mm -hmm. formed by Dr. Jennifer McLeod and my dear friend Rothy, um, Rothy, Dory Rothman, who's still alive in New Jersey, my dear Huggy Bear mm -hmm. mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, and the two of them had uh, 38 states with campaign ma ERA campaign managers in those states. And they were looking for somebody in Florida. Oh, I see. And I was in office. That's what it was. I was in office. And at that time, I stepped down from office, not just to do this, but I stepped down 
So getting death threats from be being grabbing the microphone and talking about women. And at the city city council, council? yeah. And boats would go by uh, Sandio strike Hitler, you know, on them and people would scream obscenities in the front door as they walked by. Because you wanted yeah, women treated uh, equally in the city. Right, and this was a, a conservative town. It later turned more liberal, uh, progressive, and now it's back to being conservative. Hmm. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? Um, it got reignited, the ERA, yeah. for you. And you I just, got, you that's how it started, fight. this ERA campaign network, and Dr. McLeod is now out of it, and Dory is almost 90 and oh out of it. Yeah, but she's a darling uh, in New Jersey. But um, I just, I guess I got the feeling of power suddenly. So this is what politics is, you know, because I was in a small political mm. thing, you know. And we did go to Tallahassee on city business and that. So I said, oh. maybe this is the way to do it. Training week. So I joined this ERA campaign network, and they got behind me, and uh, gradually it dwindled till it was only myself and a couple of other people, mm. because the conservative movement moved in even then, you know, yeah. and squelched us. But I just grew with it. Once I got my feet under me, and I had a group, and they gave me support, I grew with it. And I went on my own, formed my own groups, and did a couple of other things that I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, Late, you know, law-wise, mm -hmm. laws changed, and I learned that's the way you do it. And when the legislators say, "Oh, we'd love to hear from you," they mean what they really mean is you can come and talk to my legislative aide anytime you want to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he or she can't speak for me. Mm -hmm. This is the round, the catch twenty-two that you go all the way up there and go to my legislator. You go see the legislative aide and you ask this pertinent question. How does the legislator stand on co-sponsoring the Equal Rights Men and passing it? Mm. Well, I can't speak for the legislator. And I feel like saying, what are you doing wasting my time? Technically, this is a 92-year-old issue. <laughs> Someone, mm. you should have it, your legislator should have a clearly stated opinion on this. Yeah, well, they <laughs> do. It's not a They're just not, they're just, <laughs> they're really wimpy. Um, when I spoke, in well, they don't want you going to the paper and saying that you got this, you got word from the because then I hate women, women or something. Right? right yeah. Oh no, I don't stand for the ERA. Right. Yeah, but that's the thing. They want to be against it. They just don't want to have to say it out yeah. loud. Yeah. And so that's why they're not hearing it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, when we were honored, those of us who were in this uh, profiled in this book, feminists who changed America. Yeah. Um, I was in the room with Gloria Steinem and Karen Cross and all these people I had just heard about, you know, and I thought, me? What am I doing here? But it's a big book, so a lot of us got included. <laughs> uh, but, um, well, but Dave, a lot of work mattered. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't know. Um, David Brooks, I think, was the, one of the speakers. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Cameron, you can't see the face. No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Could have been David Brooks, but a name very similar. Uh, but yeah, a, a well-known journalist uh, mm -hmm. spoke and uh, about various things. And I stood up and I said, because I'm always in the front row, I'm always with my hand up, <laughs> to show other women they could speak too. Right. They wait for a woman to speak. I'm it. You mm -hmm. know, throw throw tomatoes. I don't care. Mm -hmm. So I asked him. Um, when are you going to write about the Equal Rights Amendment? And Zoe Nicholson, who, who's now a friend of mine out from in California, California yeah. Yeah, she said, that woman's got more balls than all the men in this room. <laughs> That's the way she is. Yeah, she's not subtle. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's the one that starved herself the first time. I know. Yeah, I yeah. have her book. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, um, she wouldn't. She went on a starvation binge until the past the ERA, and they just didn't. And she was with the group in, in Springfield in Illinois, just to fill in for the video. Yes, um, they yeah. did that. Yeah. And, um, she did it so the Johnson Illinois was there. Mary Ann Bale, who's in Maryland now, who's uh, one of the women on one of the other interviews that I've oh, done, great. was also there. Mm. Um, yeah, 60, it was 45 or f almost 50 days. Um, 
Yes, yeah, she's written, written a wonderful book about it. Yeah, I um, have her book. 